Today we are going to be spilling the, as the, the young kids say, the tea. Wait, on low development tools. But before we do that, question for you. I get comments sometimes saying there is no tea or coffee in my mugs actually and that I'm just baking it. So before I actually give you the answer and I expose the truth, pause this video and go comment. Does Tiff have coffee or tea in her mug or is she is it just an empty cup? Okay, now that you voted, here is the truth. Da, da, da. I have real tea in it. It looks like coffee and I don't want to spill it, but you can see it there. Yeah, it's real. Don't mess around. It's real. Has it been fake before? Maybe, but usually I'm, I'm pretty heavy on tea and coffee. Got to keep up the energy. All right, let's get to it. Today, we are going to be talking all about low code or no code development tools. These have really made a rise in 2024 and there's been a lot of talk about it, both good and well, frankly, a lot of bad. Now we're going to talk today about what does it mean for developers, but even more so than developers, what does it mean for the future of work? What does it mean for people who build with these tools? Will everyone become developers all of a sudden? What does it look like? I'm going to fill you in on everything that you need to know about these tools and how you can stay ahead of them. All right, let's get into it. Oh, but before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more tech, future tech, coding, AI, all of that kind of stuff. And shout out to some of these subscribers here. Some of you have been with me from almost the very beginning, which is just wild to think about. And you all mean so much to me. Leave in the comments what type of videos you like to see from me the most. So, well, I make more of them. First up, let's define what do we mean when we say low code or no code tools? Like let's set the bar as to, or the standard as to what are we referring to here? Now, when you think low code or no code tools, they're essentially allowing users to create applications or part of applications through simply using different graphical user interfaces. So a lot of times these are drag and drops or even typing in commands now with AI as to what you are looking for. Recently checked out one the other day, it was called, I think it was called Web Crumbs. I'll put a video clip of it here. And what it is, is it's kind of low code in the sense that you literally type what component you want to be generated. It will generate it for you, but then it will also give you the code. So you can take that code, that snippet of code, put it into your own code base and then continue building. Now that is on the verge of what I'd consider to be a low code tool because it is in one way not coding at all, but that's no code. But then on the other hand, it's generating code for you. It's like kind of that weird area, but there's a lot of tools like that, especially now because of AI. And that's not going anywhere. We're going to see that advance at such a quick pace and what it can create for us. I need to sit back here, being passionate. What it can create for us, how fast it can create different things for us. And it kind of brings up a lot of questions. I mean, even when I was using that tool, I thought to myself, it would have taken me a long time, especially early on in my career, to build out this component that I can now just type in and AI will spit out the result for me. What does this mean? Now, before we get to what exactly this means for developers or really anyone that works in tech, because this really does, these technologies do touch everyone from product management to designers to literally every single role is impacted by this. And we'll get to why in a sec here, but here are why. Let's first look at from a company standpoint, why are these tools really helpful or beneficial to them? Okay, so I made a list here. One is reduce development time and costs, of course. Another is empower non-technical users to create applications or part of applications. I mean, even with this web crumbs tool that I was talking about, no longer does a developer need to be prompting it to give them a result, anyone can. Another one is allow developers to focus on more complex tasks. So does this mean then, non-technical people will be using these tools while more technical people will be building out more of the complex processes. Something to think about. And the fourth one is accelerate digital transformation in businesses. Now more than ever, we are able to move quicker, move more rapidly. And as competition does as well, more businesses are going to want to get on that train and continue to evolve at a quick pace. This is really interesting to me. A lot of times as a developer, or even if you're not a developer, where the development team spends a lot of time is through debugging. It's through building out new features and then often running into well problems. Then what happens is a senior developer comes on board, helps the junior developer get to where they need to be. And then the senior developer goes back to working on what they were working on. That takes time. And now with these low code or no code tools, once again, especially AI, a lot of that is resolved. Things such as GitHub Copilot. Now, instead of asking a human for help, junior developers or even senior developers can go and ask AI. 
But here's the thing, it's not perfect. It's far from perfect. And there are some major technical limitations with these tools. Here are a few of them. One thing to consider is performance. When you think performance, applications built on these platforms may not be as efficient as custom coded solutions, especially for complex or high load uh, applications. Now this is really gets interesting. Performance is key, especially to stand out from your competitors. So it's finding that balance of being able to use something like a low code or no code tool versus how is it affecting performance. Another thing I've seen, I don't know if this is actually on my list here. Uh, it's actually number two. Mind reader from my own mind. Uh, number two is really customization because it is limiting. It's still very limiting as to what you can do. Even when you're using something like an AI tool, you are still prompt, you're prompting it, but it is just returning what it is familiar with. And that might be designs that's seen in the past or different things like that, but there's no originality. And that is a really big limitation to these no code tools. And another is vendor lock-in. A lot of these low-code tools are lock you in. And now some of them are trying to work around that and get better at not locking you in because even they recognize that that is a big way for people to not purchase them or to not go with them. So that is, I would say, becoming a thing of the past more so is vendor lock-in or becoming less of an issue because they're recognizing that no one will go with them if they lock them in. Now here, here's a really good example. So take this code here. This is a JavaScript function. Probably could have been written a little bit better, but past point. This is how you would write it in an application. You can see it takes about three lines. It's, it's pretty straightforward, but this is a very simple one. Now in low code or node code, what you would do is simply drag and drop this and then the function would be created in the background. But even as you can see, you lose the potential here for a lot of the customization to happen. It's it's gone are the days where you are able to, if you're doing this by freehand coding, gone are the days of using a low code that you can customize or even if you don't think you wanna customize, go back later and make alterations. So it brings up a question though, what is the impact on developers in particular for these low code or no code tools? Well, here's the good thing, they're not going anywhere, developers aren't going anywhere. If you're not a developer, don't worry, you might not have to start using these tools. I think right now, the state where it is at with these low code or no code tools, they're getting really good, but for large corporations, you don't see them dabbling too much in these solutions because they aren't that customizable and of the vendor lock-in potential. Now, the thing is, when a lot of these companies start maybe integrating more low code or no code tooling, that might be a different question as to what that means for developers. There is this new role kind of surfacing more so, which is citizens developers, where it's not necessarily these hardcore developers, but they, you know, they build with low code or no code applications. This brings up a point that is kind of random, but I just feel like I need to insert here. Low code and no code tools get a really bad rap online. And I get it. They sometimes can be frustrating to work with. They sometimes aren't that flexible. I get it. But what I do think is pretty cool about them and even the way AI is going with these low code or no code tools is it opens up opportunities for a lot more people to become builders. I really think what's going to happen with low code and tech in general is we're going to see this merge. And I've said this before, we're going to see this merge where these roles aren't so predefined anymore. It isn't, I'm a developer, so I strictly code. I'm a product manager. I would never touch code, different things like that. If you are going to stand out today and whether you're a developer or non-technical individual, having a bit of the, those lines blurred and skills, you're open to trying different skills. And even if it is through things such as low code tools is going to be key. Gone are the days where you should put yourself in a box and stay in that box and and be scared to try something or think low code is bad. Low code has a long way to go and it's not gonna take any jobs anytime soon, if ever, really. It's just everything's going to continue to evolve and I think that is really the main thing to take away from this video. Understand, as we spoke about where it is currently at, what this means for you and your role, which right now means nothing, except being able to stay open, open-minded, continuing to build and tinker with these tools, developer or not, and then in the future, really understanding that a lot of these roles aren't going to be as predefined or put into a box as they once were. It's going to be more so product managers might hop in and, and code for a bit and developers might do some product management. Now obviously that'd be chaotic in a big company, but I think now what will happen is as a product manager, if you're able to code, what you will do is you're now more informed as to what the developers are actually working on, what the time for it should really be. And that's really powerful. When someone's looking at hiring you or you're leading a team, it's pretty impactful. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed this conversation about low code or no code tools. I see them just getting such terrible raps online, terrible feedback, and I get it, but I do think some of that negativity is coming from a place of fear. Sometimes they suck, and I agree, but other times there is really cool tools out there even the one I spoke about today, Webcrumbs. I'm not, this isn't sponsored by Webcrumbs, and I hope I'm saying their name right, which I'll, I'll put here. I just, it's one I recently played around with because even for builders, being able to use these and take pieces of them, pieces of code or generate components from these tools, really helps build faster, more efficient, and honestly, get more creative. So you don't have to drink so much to your coffee and can get work done sooner. Yeah, that's what I did. But but I don't ever want to not drink so much tea or coffee, it's a problem. All right, oh, speaking of that, you know what I recently built is a computer vision and Python program that detects whenever I am drinking coffee. I'll link that down below. I did a video on it and linked the GitHub uh, repo as well for that. So if you're looking to build something fun, go check it out. Thank you all, I'll see you all soon. Bye everyone.